Hello. We've heard a lot about the application of artificial intelligence to enterprise infrastructures. In particular, intent-based networking is designed to make network operation easier and smarter. But is it and can it work? I spoke to a range of industry experts to find out. What is intent-based networking or application-specific networking? Application-specific networking reverses the way traditional networks work. Historically, we build a network, a general purpose Swiss Army knife type network, and then we try to make all the individual applications work over that network. Application specific networking says, instead, give the application the controls, the APIs, the platform, such that the application can control the network, and in fact can spin up the network to meet the very specific needs of that application. Intent-based networking is software that sits on top of infrastructure and that enables network operators to operate their uh, network as one system uh, in a fully automated way, as opposed to what traditionally has been a box-per-box -box manual process. And in order to deliver on that, intent-based networking uh, automates every phase of uh, the life cycle of your network services. Uh, design, build, deploy, validate, ultimately providing you a platform to operate day zero, day one, day two plus in a massively automated way. Intent-based networking comes from the proposition or the premise that in the past many networking engineers have gone through and envisioned in their heads or maybe in an Excel spreadsheet how they would like a network to behave and they've gone through and manually enacted against that goal. And then the verification process oftentimes was ad hoc. You know, can device A talk to node B or not? I don't know. Maybe my intent was good, maybe my intent was bad. And intent-based networking is really formalizing that whole set of processes so you express what you'd like to occur in some place that then can be immediately acted upon in some automatic or kind of programmatic form and then going back and verifying that the behavior you I, I, were looking for actually occurred. Intent-based networking is basically building an infrastructure that's driven by software that takes the intent of an application into account first and then has an infrastructure that can respond to the way you program the intent of the network. I think of intent-based networking as an application or a user, a program, telling the network what it wants, and then the network does it. That could be a configuration, it could be a particular deployment, or it could be a service. When should the intelligence and control of the network be directed by the network, and when should it be directed by the device or application running on the device? So since ap each application gets its own network, it means that that network is programmed according to the specific needs of that application. So that application may or may not need encryption. It may need less than 10 milliseconds of jitter if it's a voice conversation between you and me. Uh, it may, may need very high uh, throughput if it's file transfer. The very fact that we've literally given that application its own virtual network and control over that virtual network enables it to get the security and performance that it requires. Ultimately, the network is there to serve the purpose of the business, which is driven by the applications. And so the network itself is a critical asset for infrastructure. It's a critical uh, foundation for the digital initiatives that companies have. Uh, and therefore, it makes sense for the networking teams to be separate. Uh, at the same time, there needs to be interfaces whereby, through automation, the application requirements and the business requirements translate uh, you know, directly and seamlessly into uh, the network uh, operations. That's a really interesting question. There, you know, when you get into these technologies that have the opportunity of boiling the ocean and saving the world, um, Oftentimes people forget the premise of kind of governments and, and control and accountability. So realistically, I think what unfolds is the, the set of overarching goals or the targets 
are expressed by a policy engine. Those are display, you know, dispatched to devices. Oftentimes those devices will act somewhat dynamically to try as best as they can to enforce that policy within some set of bounds. So I think that's where you start to break things down. It's policy versus the dynamic enforcement or enactment of policy. What new types of applications or services can be enabled by intent-based networking or application-specific networking? So historically, we've been able to get around the fact that the applications and the networks don't directly communicate by wiring up private networks from router to router, custom CPE to custom CPE. Uh, we've cheated, essentially. <laughs> it's expensive, it's unwieldy, but it gets the job done. Well, now with programmable networking, we can extend that security and reliability to anywhere the internet goes because we've turned it into software. So use cases like multi-cloud, IoT, business to consumer, business to business extranet, where previously it was not feasible to run private circuits and custom CP, now all of a sudden with application specific networking and giving that application the controls and the APIs to actually control the network, now we can give the security and reliability that those type of applications require. You know, web services companies like Amazon or Google, Google Compute Engine, they use a lot of intent-based networking to place virtual machines or containers in various places and connect them up, provide, you know, virtual data centers. Super powerful tool, all based on expressing the idea that this virtual machine and that virtual sh machine should be able to speak to each other. You know, other big web scales will do things like uh, use MPLS circuits that they build up, they take all of the requirements, put them in a big bin sorting algorithm, figure out the most efficient way to pack that, and push out the new circuit structure so they, again, arrive at today's business intent in a super programmatic way. What's the role of standards in intent-based networking or application-specific networking in order to prevent vendor lock-in? Standards are extremely important in an intent-based system because for, in order for an intent-based system to work, it has to have telemetry and visibility into all of the devices and all the applications on the network, which requires that they, they talk to the system through open APIs and standards. So in intent-based networking, the way I see it is there's several parts or applications or ways to infer intent or give intent to the network. Uh, and standards eventually are what operators always want, but really what they want is not standards. What they want is some kind of interoperability. So there is some kind of standardization that will need to come for each different use case or application of intent-based networking. Because it could just be uh, provisioning or it could be a service. Those are quite different and would require different standards. It'll come to that, but I think it has to get bigger, a bigger trend first. Um, I think what's gonna happen, and like all new technologies, what I always think about standards is standards are great typically five years after something's been deployed. It just doesn't happen that fast in standards. Getting people to agree is difficult, and if everybody wait for standards, we would not have a lot of innovation in new technology. And unfortunately, I think we have some smart, aggressive technologists involved in most of these technologies that aren't going to wait, combined by the push by customers who don't want to wait. So I would suspect it'll be years, five plus years, before we see anything around standardization in this area. And if somebody, again, did come with a breakthrough, I will be shocked in less than five years. And how likely is this technology to succeed, in your view? I think we're going to get there. I, I think it's going to be a long process because this is a very uh, sophisticated platform play. You're talking about designing a smart system that can watch the entire network and then programmatically respond itself. And, th and that's a very complicated system that requires uh, high levels of engineering and programming, and it's gonna be many years. So intent-based networking absolutely will succeed. I, there's no doubt in my mind. It, it's the one of the next things, there's lots of next things, but it's an important next thing of how to do networking. It's, you can almost configure, it's pretty easy to cause an intent-based network to uh, uh, appear and be used and be operational. 
and that ease is a really critical factor, and it solves the need. I think this technology has a lot of promise. I think it is much easier for customers to understand if they can dictate or tell a network provider or network um, staff to do something in a certain way for a policy. It's going to take off, I think, again, it'll probably take two or three years to really get, let's say, mainstream. I think it's going to take two or three years to have some effective solutions that are very scalable, but there still will be some innovation and some prizes along this two-year road. So the jury is still out when it comes to intent-based networking, but it'd be hard to bet against the idea of artificial intelligence being applied in the enterprise infrastructure in some form or other. Stay tuned, there'll be more on this.